Our game is turning crops and water into milk. That's the hub of the business. We supply mainly through the domestic market into Sydney and then expanding through into some Asian opportunities, particularly into, into China. I've worked with Moxie Farms for around eight years now. Josh Zeiser, the farm manager for Moxie Dairies, uh, he made contact with me, sort of floating the idea of like, we've just purchased this property, this is our plan, and they wanted to make sure they were abiding by what the legislation would allow. So they basically asked me to come out and work with them in developing this land, in developing this property itself, from a dry land cropping system into a full irrigated property. Historically we had a reasonable amount of flood irrigation, but moving towards a, a pivot pivot centred business, you know, we're not constrained to work around, you know, particular trees is quite nice, but also from our farming system works in pretty well. The plan involved removing paddock trees uh, for the installation of these new centre pivots. What's so great about the pivot irrigation system, we've been able to grow dual crops at the same time. We're lucky enough to take it off as uh, for silage, so it's turned more or less dry land into irrigation country. It's very important to be water efficient. Um, you never know when the dam's not going to fill up again, so we want to make the most of every drop that we get. You've got to feed cows, and for us, you know, we like to control the forage production. The, the whole business really performances around how much how much forage we can grow and the quality of that forage. So, you know, certainly being able to do it in house and have control of the quality. So, knowing what we're feeding them and knowing how we've grown it is really important. The current legislation works really well for farmers who are really looking outside the box. It's, it's simple, it's easy uh, and, and I think it's flexible. Because the site itself had very little remnant vegetation left on it, the only set aside option they had was revegetation. The requirement for removing paddock trees is we had to put some set asides out throughout our farm which worked out really well because we could link up other corridors of our farming. There's plenty of paddock trees being set aside in areas that make sense uh, for wildlife movements and all the rest and we're also in those areas we've made sure that we've, we've kept um, our animals out and also put barricades around trees to help um, yeah, look after the, the trees that are there. Working with local land service has been good. I think we've got a good relationship with, um, with Christian, our, our officer. And always been accessible, they're always out here to help us work through. It's really good to be involved in a business that wants to be sustainable going forward and, and it's always been our number one priority. I'm fourth generation you know, on the land and uh, I've got little kids and uh, plenty more on the way so look I think for us you know, our, our, our job is to leave it you know, in, a, in a better place than we found it and you know, wherever you can do that and also be, be productive it's pretty rewarding. Mm -hmm.